Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, Sheboygan County Administrator and co-host of this program with Chairman Mike Vandersteen. And today we're pleased to bring one of our many departments to your attention, the Planning and Conservation Department. Mr. Aaron Brault's with us. Welcome, Aaron. Hi. Aaron's been with us now, I think we're going on five years, are we not? Five years with the county, uh, the first four with the non-motorized transportation pilot program, and the last year as, as planning director. Yeah, so I'm sure some of you recognize Aaron. He's been very visible in the community with the non-motorized transportation program. We'll talk about that a little bit, as well as other roles, responsibilities of the department. But just a year or so ago, Aaron was promoted to be our director of the planning and conservation department. We consolidated uh, two departments into one and he's done an excellent job. So Aaron, please start by providing just a little background about yourself. Sure, um, I grew up in Two Rivers. I don't know how detailed we want to get here, but my uh, uh, planning experience uh, out of college, I graduated from UW-Madison and started working for a private planning consulting firm called Vandewa & Associates. Uh, I spent about four and a half years there. Um, then my wife's, uh, she's a doctor and her residency program took us to uh, Indianapolis and at that time, that was about the time the economy tanked the first time as far as the tech bubble and, and jobs were scarce. And, and so I started my own business. I was actually a, a home inspector and rode the, uh, the housing bubble. And uh, when we determined we wanted to move back to Wisconsin, I was successful in selling that business and uh, ended up at the county once oh, we moved back to Sheboygan. So. And started as manager of our non-motorized transportation program. Actually, you worked as uh, one assistant for yep. a period. Yep, yep. Yeah, I started out as an assistant in that program, and then uh, when the uh, the manager left, I was promoted to the manager position, and then shortly that, there after that, promoted to the the planning director. Right. So there are growth opportunities there. in county government, <laughs> living, breathing example. So as director of the planning and conservation department. Please give our viewers a flavor for what types of programs and services are provided. Sure, the the, the basic core pro, uh, areas of our department, uh, the, on the planning side and conservation side, are uh, we we administer the county shoreland ordinance. Uh, the septic maintenance program comes through our department. Uh, water quality uh, program on the conservation side is run through uh, the planning and conservation department. Non-metallic mining. Uh, permitting comes through, um, uh, county addressing, uh, all the county's mapping comes through our department. Uh, so we, uh, the snowmobile program, uh, it's a very diverse uh, uh, workload, I guess you could stewardship say. Stewardship program. St county stewardship program. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, there's a host of other things as well that come through our department. And so. how many staff do you have and what's your annual operating budget? Uh, we have 15 permanent staff. Uh, currently, we have 19, uh, four temporary staff. Uh, one, we typically have an intern every year. Um, we also uh, have two folks in our office that are funded through uh, uh, private entities and the county's buy-in per se in, in those areas are uh, providing a, a workspace. Um, so we have a, a gentleman in our office who uh, is funded by the Nature Conservancy uh, and is working on a, a county watershed project. Uh, we also have an aquatic invasive species coordinator that's funded through uh, Glacierland RC&D and uh, they're in our office as well. So total 19, 15 permanent. Um, Operating budget, uh, the last two years has typically been about three million thereabouts. Um, and that has decreased over the, the past few years. Uh, I looked back over the past five years, it's steadily gone down. Uh, between 10 and, 12, or 10 and 11, we, we saw about a 8% decrease, and I believe last year was about a 3% decrease in our, our annual operating budget. And I'm sure some, some viewers may have thought, wow, 15 or 19 employees. But again, you consolidated from two departments into one. Yep, yep, yep. Um, how's that been going? It's been going well. We've uh, developed synergies. I think it was a good move. Uh, it makes sense. Planning and conservation, we're, we're involved in uh, a lot of the uh, similar types of things with natural resources. So uh, we've uh, been able to uh, capture some of that efficiency uh, with our mapping, uh, CAD work, and uh, just being able to interact in the same office uh, with both divisions has really been a benefit, I think. Just today, Pat Drynan came up to the office and Pat Drynan is the executive director of the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation, just received an award from uh, the chamber. And 
uh, he pop up to compliment how nice it is to work with the planning department and your GIS staff. He said that that's just worked out so well. Yeah, we've actually done some analysis for them, which I have a GIS background and I've tried to been push on onto our mapping uh, uh, program or uh, our mapping folks. Uh, we've been typically a maintaining data and, and developing data, parcel information, things like that, and we've never really gotten into a lot of analysis uh, using the geographical information system tools. And uh, so working with Patrick, we've been able to do some analytical things. Uh, one of the uh, things we've been able to do for them, there was potentially a, a data center who needed to be within so many miles of a, a highway, had to be within so many miles of high tension wires, things like that, had to be on sewer, had to have redundant power, things like that. So we were able to plug all that into a model in our mapping software and, and at the end of the day spit out certain areas within the county that fit those criteria. So Outstanding. Outstanding. It's a, it's a nice tool. Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation is in the uh, county administration building, so they have the ability to work real closely with our planning department and our register of deeds. And we, we almost treat them as though they're one of our 20 departments. They're, we're a partner, they're not a county office, but they're in our administration building. And again, just got recognized with a real nice award from the chamber, a letter from Governor Walker complimenting the, the job that the board as a whole and Patrick and his staff have done. Well, moving along a little more about you specifically, I, I think Folks have gotten a, I hope they've gotten an appreciation for the excellent background you bring to the table, the private sector experience, the planning experience, uh, building inspection, non-motorized transportation, GIS. I mean, you have a broad skill set and you have some excellent staff that you oversee. You put mm -hmm. the budget together every year, but of late, Aaron, where have you been spending your time? I'd say within the past three months, maybe four months, 90% of my time has probably been involved with the, uh, the Sheboygan uh, River and Dredging, or River Harbor Dredging Project. Um, so we've been, uh, and other key staff, no doubt, in our department and, and uh, working with the, the city of Sheboygan staff as well. Uh, we've all been putting in a lot of time on that project, you included, so. So that's um, been a big emphasis of late. I actually, the county's been involved with it for probably the last year and a half or two, but uh, certainly Aaron has provided a, a key leadership role the last few months in particular. Uh, Pat... Um, Miles. Pat Miles, yes, how quickly I forget. Pat Miles on conservation side, he's, he's been involved for some time. Now, Emily is the new individual who covers the non-motorized, but you've also been very involved with uh, those projects that are coming along. Sure, yeah, Emily Vetting in our, she helps with a lot of the education and outreach and, and I still maintain a role in, in, in the budgeting and, and overseeing the implementation of a lot of these projects. Um, you know, she came along a little too, I, I'd say on the tail end of getting that stuff into the, the pipeline, so to speak. So um, there's about 27 infrastructure projects uh, that have been funded. Um, of course, some have been already completed, some will be completed this summer. Uh, we're looking at about three projects this summer, uh, two out in Plymouth, and then uh, finishing up County Highway O. And then um, 2013, we'll see some of our, our larger projects, uh, Union Pacific Rail Line, uh, Eisner Avenue, uh, Taylor Drive, the Sheboygan Falls project, a couple other projects out in Plymouth, the Kohler projects uh, should finish up in 2013. Uh, I had a very good meeting with Union Pacific yesterday. A fella flew in from Omaha. Um, from their headquarters and we sat down and talked about the Union Pacific Trail and so things are moving along there as far as uh, acquiring the, the real estate to be able to build that trail. So Outstanding. Outstanding. Um, well, final question before I turn it over to Mike. Non-motorized transportation, we you know received this uh, grant a number of years ago from the from the feds. We're one of four pilots as yep. I think most people are aware if they've followed this over the years, but it literally has been years and this is the year or that you really feel a lot of these projects are going to start breaking ground and getting rolling? 2013, some of our bigger projects. This past year, we completed eight of nine projects. We had to forego one. The bid came in about 41% over the engineer's estimate. Uh, we're rebidding that this summer. Um, so last year was a busy year. This year, we'll see a little bit of a dip. And then 2013, we should see a lot of activity again. again. Yeah. Very good. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Adam. 
Um, Aaron, you know all levels of government have been really under a lot of pressure to keep property taxes in check. Mm -hmm. How has your department met that challenge in the county? Sure, as I mentioned over the, the past five years that I've, I've looked at, you know, we've, we've uh, steadily seen a decrease in our department. Um, we've lost some staff over the, the past few years. Um, from when I started about five years ago, I believe we're down three or four staff members. Um, uh, we've also diversified our funding. We're looking for more and more grants, both public and private. I mentioned some uh, the, the TNC, the Nature Conservancy grant, uh, that helps uh, uh, fund some of our staffing, um, and also uh, just simple cost savings within the department. Um, uh, over the past year, uh, we've switched a lot of our printing around. Uh, we had a, a number of printers uh, that we didn't need any longer. Uh, or that we could uh, consolidate into one all-in-one type of machine. And so that saved us on, on rent and toner and things like that. And, uh, you, you know, just simple things. Our, con uh, our uh, um, conference room, we keep the door shut and, and the temperature set down to 63 degrees in the wintertime. And in the summertime, it goes up to, I think, 72 degrees. So, um, so we've been trying wherever we can to... That's great. Provide that now, cost savings. Now, one of the things that uh, that you brought to the county board was to institute a fee for a uh, recreation fee, and, and it's turned out to be a fee that's really just applying to our boat landings. How's that going? It, it's actually to our boat landings and our campground out at the, the Sheboygan Marsh. And mm -hmm. uh, last year was the first full year um, that it, it was uh, had been implemented. Uh, and uh, it went well. I, I uh, you know, it was rather contentious when it uh, when it started, and uh, um, you know, there are still some gripes here and there. But we were about nine thousand dollars in the black last year, with about five thousand of that uh, being uh, put into a non-lapsing segregated account for the campground specifically, because that's where we receive those funds from. And then the, the remainder will be used uh, basically in a savings account, again, a non-lapsing segregated account for any uh, boat landing maintenance that we have to do. Uh, for instance, last year, uh, you know, some of the maintenance has been delayed and delayed and delayed uh, due to funding. And, and last year, we were able to dredge a little Elkhart Lake um, we are able to repair the parking lot at, at Gerber Lake um, and by a adding some gravel. It was all beat up, potholed, um, and we were receiving a lot of complaints about that, so we were able to tackle that. And then out at the, uh, the Sheboygan Marsh, we were able to install a new pier. Um, so those are some of the projects we've been uh, using those monies for. And again, uh, you know, the, one of the goals of it was to, uh, again, provide, uh, in essence, a savings account for future uh, bigger projects that may come up, paving parking lots, new piers, new docks, that kind of thing, lighting, new bathrooms that have to be installed every so often. Um, and, and, and so we'll have that, those, that fund there. Now you've got a ranger that also goes around to the facilities and kind of keeps them up. Uh, is that helping to pay part of that salary too? Yep, and it's also paying for that uh, individual salary. Okay, that's yep. great to hear. And yep. Mike, I'd like to interject here because <clears throat> the county board deserves so much credit for having the courage and the will to see this through. You know, when when the rec fee was proposed, of course people weren't real pleased about that. But how often do we hear people complain about the federal level not paying the bills and the ongoing debt that builds up at the state level? We're starting to see a little turn with their budget process, but for over a decade they've had structural deficits not paying for things as they go. In Sheboygan County, the county board striving to maintain take care of our infrastructure and pay as we go rather than pass that burden on to future generations. So I very much appreciate your leadership and the county board's leadership to step up and have the will to say, you know, not everybody uses our boat landings, not everybody goes camping. Uh, these are predominantly user fee opportunities to pay for, maintain, take care of what we have and uh, so far it's been working out real and, well. And I'll add on to that, we saw this year, um, we had a detailed breakdown of you know, what lakes we were, were gathering the fees from, and, and we also asked on our, our, our passes, you know, just simply, where's your zip code? And so we know that about 20, I believe 23% of the, of the funds we gathered came from out of county. So it was visitors who don't pay property taxes in Sheboygan County that are using our uh, amenities uh, helped 
pay for them. They might as well help pay for them. Yep. So and my compliments. Thank you for those compliments, and it's good to see that the department's making that program work so efficiently. Yeah. Um, to switch gears a little bit, uh, going back to more of the planning activities, I know recently uh, you had a, a survey for the Marsh Management Plan update. Could you tell us a little bit about that plan and some of the other plans your office is working on? Yeah, there's two plans that we hope to uh, uh, update this year, uh, one being the Farmland Preservation Plan, and uh, uh, without going into too much detail on that, that allows uh, area farmers, if they enroll in the program, to receive a, a tax credit for keeping their, their uh, land and agricultural use. And the second one that you had mentioned was uh, the Marsh Management Plan update. Uh, that was uh, um, done first in 2001 with a lot of good public input and uh, uh, there's just some areas in there that have become out of date so we're looking at uh, uh, redoing that plan or updating that plan this year as well. So, and you're right, there's a survey on, out on, online. If you go to our website, uh, you, you can, uh, it's, it's a pretty simple survey, five, six questions, doesn't take you a lot of time to fill out, but just gives us a general idea of what folks are looking for, what they are uh, looking for at the marsh in the future, how they want to see us manage that. Um, you know, what they like about the marsh, what they don't like about the marsh, things like that, so. Now, what kind of interval uh, do you update these plans? Is this a annual or, or, or strong, or Typically, much longer period? Typically, planning, uh, you want to update your plan probably every five, eight years, okay. somewhere in there between five and eight years. All right. Things change. It's it's a working document, so you want to make sure it's it's accurate and, That's great. and timely, so. And one of the other activities uh, your department's been involved in is uh, dealing with hazardous waste and, and trying to stage different events to collect that. I know last year you got into electronic waste a little bit more than, than the normal hazardous waste. Could you tell yep. us a little bit about those programs and what's anticipated this year? Yeah, the, the household hazardous waste program, along with our waste pharmaceutical uh, collection program, are, are two things I, I, I didn't mention previously, but those are also things that our department administers. Uh, the Household Hazardous Waste Program, it's been widely successful. Um, you'd be amazed at the stuff we still get every year. Every year we still receive DDT, um, you know, and other toxic substances. Uh, I believe it was last year or the year prior, I don't remember, we, we had a call for what do I do with two tons of glycerin. Um, you know, so there's just some crazy stuff mm -hmm. that come, that's out there that uh, there's nowhere else to dispose of it. Um, so either it's going to end up in our ditches at our boat landings, you know, we get dehumidifiers and refrigerators at, at our boat landings every year. So uh, this provides an outlet, and uh, it's, a, it's a popular outlet. Um, everybody seems uh, uh, really on board with that program. This year, there will be a change going back to user fees. Uh, we will be charging $10 per car load. Um, at the, the Household Hazardous Waste uh, Program, um, which in other counties that have started to charge, you, you don't see a reduction in quantity, which is good. We're getting it off the streets, out of people's barns, out of, the, out of people's basements. Uh, but you do see the car loads go down. And what tends to happen is that the neighbors get together and, and pack mm -hmm. up a, a truck and bring it all in. Uh, at the end of the day, we're, we're taking care of what we're interested in and getting that hazardous stuff off the streets. So. Um, same with the waste pharmaceuticals. We have uh, collection boxes now at, um, we've added one at Kohler over the past year, as well as uh, Sheboygan Falls. So now um, Elkhart Lake, I believe, is the only uh, police department that does not have a drop box in their uh, entryway for waste pharmaceuticals. So. That's great. And, and uh, the response from the public on those is, is good to see, and it's all helpful. Yeah, and we had asked, going back to the, the fee, one of the questions we asked, we do a little survey every year when people come in. We asked, would you be willing to pay uh, you know, a small fee to offset the cost of this? And, and we were encouraged. It, I believe it was 97% of people said yes. That's great. And so uh, we're hoping that we don't have too many headaches with that. Excellent. Now, I understand there's going to be a little reorganization in your department. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, unfortunately, uh, Pat Miles in our department, he's been the county conservationist. I believe he's been with the county for over 30 years now, uh, has decided to retire. Um, well, I wouldn't say that's unfortunate for well, him. But. Uh, un not unfortunate <laughs> for him. I can't wait for that day, but uh, unfortunate for the department. Um, 
uh, that position will be consolidated it, uh, into the, the engineering uh, management position in the con conservation uh, side of our department, and then we'll be uh, hiring a, a new full-time person in our department um, to do the, the park ranger activities. Uh, we're calling it the outdoor uh, programs uh, coordinator. So they'll be pretty much involved with everything we do outdoors. So our recreational facilities, the snowmobile program, um, conservation education has been lacking the past few years uh, due to downsizing and, and cuts. So we'd like to bring some of that back. Um, and that, that position will probably also do the household hazardous waste and the waste pharmaceutical program as well. Sounds like so. some real good moves to uh, take advantage of uh, all the uh, qual good qualities that that, that individual is going to have. Yeah, yeah, very much. Well, thanks for working on that, Adam. Yep. I'll turn it over to you for finish up. Thanks, Mike. And at the beginning, we talked a little bit about all the responsibilities you and your staff have, and we, we chat a little bit about the harbor river dredging. Let's end there a little bit and, and just set the stage. I think, again, most people probably have followed that pretty closely in the press and it's been pretty well reported, but big picture, high-end summary, what's happening in Sheboygan County? What's happening with this river harbor dredging? Yeah, cleanup? 2012 will be a busy uh, year on, on the, the river and, and the harbor. Um, at the end of the day, including the work that took place in 2007 up in Sheboygan Falls, uh, it'll be a, between a 77 and 96 million dollar project. Uh, you know that's going to be invested into our river and our community and in our county. Uh, so um, you know we're very fortunate. There's 40 or so areas of concern because of pollutants in in water bodies along the Great Lakes, both on the Canadian side and the U.S. side. And and Sheboygan was picked basically to. Uh, receive this investment so I, I feel very fortunate as a, a citizens of this county that uh, that this has come our way and we've taken such such a strong leadership role in, in working with it um, you know from economic development uh, along the riverfront uh, which benefits the entire county um, to fish and wildlife consumption uh, advisories that will eventually be taken off uh, uh, for our river. Um, I, I, it's a huge benefit. Habitat restoration projects are also included in that. Um, so we'll be working at Kiwanis Park, uh, Taylor Drive, Indiana Avenue intersection, Wildwood Island in the city of Sheboygan, um, along uh, Kohler, some stretches along uh, through the village of Kohler. So um, just a, you know, I, I, I think we're all fortunate in this community to have been targeted like that. Oh. And as you know, I wholeheartedly agree. It's a it's a tremendous project, and there's a lot of activity and a lot of stakeholders working on this. Some work done, as you said, in 2007, Upper River. We've had the Middle River now dredged in part. They'll continue that work this summer. Mm -hmm. And then the last piece, as you know, that we're really focusing on is dredging the harbor. Yep. What's happening there? What's the status? Well, it's a little nebulous right now. As you know, uh, we are looking at, we're looking at disposal options, where we're going to go with the stuff, um, the sediment in the river east of 8th Street. And that's the area where there's very low concentrations of, of contaminants. Um, and they're so low, in fact, that the EPA or the Corps won't fund, fund the disposal of it. So that's been up to the county and the city to, dispun, or to find those funds for the disposal. So um, I'm sure as many of our viewers are aware, you know, we looked at the airport site. Um, you know, there's been some contention over that. So now we're exploring other options uh, uh, at licensed landfills. Um, of and, course, that's going to be more expensive. Mm -hmm. So, you know. And, and to give folks a flavor for that, you said 77 to 96 million. The EPA is looking at 10 million alone just for dredging the harbor. The harbor. Yep. And then of course, if we haul it to a, a existing landfill out of the area, and the closest one is Whitelaw, yep. uh, that's gonna add literally millions, though we're in the midst right now of negotiating and trying to get the best buy we can. We're also leveraging resources between the EPA, the state, the city, the county, and uh, some of our viewers might be wondering, well, geez, how much is this going to cost us locally? How would you respond to that? At this time, you know, we're, again, it's a little bit nebulous because we're working on those prices. Uh, if we go the landfill option, um, 
I would say shooting from the hip and based on the estimates that we have in-house now, uh, we'll be looking at anywhere from uh, probably 200 to 350,000. Right. With right. at the county level. And so if we have two to 300,000 from the city and two to 300,000 from the county, that's gonna draw 10 million plus from the federal government and two million plus from the state government. Yep. For, so from a standpoint of leveraging our resources, a uh, tremendous opportunity. And, and we continue to hear from the EPA and the Army Corps, well, this is a once in a lifetime. This may never happen again. And yep. whenever you hear someone say that to you, you know, never's a long time. But why do you think they are saying that, Aaron? Well, uh, the simple fact is uh, our harbor is recreational. We don't ship goods out of our harbor anymore, other than the fishing industry. Um, but when you're comparing our fishing industry to the ports of Milwaukee, ports of Gary, Indiana, Cleveland, whatever else on the Great Lakes um, that have those type of ports, Duluth, Superior, those are where the core is spending its resources. Um, you know, their budgets, like most other budgets, have been shrinking and, and becoming more competitive and, and at, the, at the national level. So um, they're prioritizing, and that's where they're putting their priorities, is in the, the big commercial harbors, keeping those dredged, keeping those working. And, and, and so uh, for our little harbor, though it's very important to us on, on the grand scheme of things when you're talking commercial ports, uh, we just don't have that volume. So as you mentioned, the, you know, we looked at the airport site. It turned out to be a very feasible site with 50 feet of clay and yep. in an area of the airport we couldn't develop, fenced in. But ultimately the town board was not comfortable with it. The residents weren't comfortable with that, were respectful of that. We're now looking at other options. They may be more expensive, yep. but uh, we remain hopeful. One thing that folks perhaps haven't gotten a real flavor for, but certainly we have, and Chairman Vandersteen, is the support we've received from the, the business community, the, the veterans organizations that want to see ships be able to come in here, the charter fishermen, uh, other recreationalists that use our river. Um, I think I've covered most of it, but yeah, I, there's been a lot of... Yeah, and, and, and uh, even if the, the harbor gets dredged, there's cruise ships that want to make Sheboygan a port of call on, on the Great Lakes. Um, you know, last year there was going to be a large Great Lakes schooner that was going to dock here. It's more of a tourist attraction, but it couldn't. It couldn't get in. Right. The, it was too shallow. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, the Windsor ship, they're looking at the, the, the Naval Association, they're looking at bringing in the U.S. cannon while they... They probably won't be able to if we don't get the harbor dredged. In fact, I don't think they will be able to. Um, so yeah, the, I, there's a lot riding on it. I, I, again, I think it's a great opportunity for our community. And, and again, at the federal level where they're prioritizing, I see this at, at least as a once in our, my lifetime opportunity. And one that the future generations I think will appreciate for uh, years and years to come. Uh, Chairman Mike Vandersteen, the county board just voted on a resolution in support of the county's mm -hmm. role 27 to 4 just uh, this week. And so there's strong support from the county board. Again, we need to lock in a site. We need to lock in the dollars. And of course, then we'll be returning to the county board for a final decision. Aaron, thank you so much for joining us today. Covered a lot of ground, a lot of information. If you want more information or want to make some suggestions or constructive criticism, please don't... Uh, Please don't hesitate to contact your county board supervisor or myself or Aaron, or member of the planning department. Next month, we're going to have Tom Agerbrecht here from the Health and Human Services Department. County Government Works Week is soon going to be upon us, and the Health and Human Services Department is going to be focused on. So we're looking forward to having him there. And until then, Aaron, thank you. Thank On behalf you. of the county board, thanks for joining us.